Just got off the train at Aviemore, bang in the middle of the, the Scottish Highlands. And I'm going to spend the next three days doing the Cairngorms loop. A little bit nervous because I've only ever done one night's wild camping while cycling before. And I'm planning on doing three. And the other thing is the weather forecast is variable. You can probably hear the wind noise in a minute. So, I am quite likely to get wet. But, I'm really looking forward to it. A little luck. Rain's eased off. <laughs> it was looking like type 2 fun there for a bit. Electric probably explains why there has been tarmac up here. I said that, there doesn't seem to be any water behind the dam. I assume it's the, the dry spell we've had. There's some water up here, but it's not enough to feed that little, the little river. I've ridden 30 miles, a lot of it uphill on rough gravel, and I think I'm done. So I think I've got a place to camp for the night was here, which is in rather gorgeous surroundings. Day two, our first full day of this route. Starting off with quite a tricky little bit of single track. Hiker bag. Village 
country road filled to put down rebellions in the 18th century. Although it's been replaced by an A road over to my left when I crossed earlier. Scottish Gothic. The other one. my little filter it allows me to get water on the go as well and you're never too far from water in Scotland We're waiting for a big climb now For some reason, they attack by bees. Wasps. Oh, there's bees nesting there. That's why. I haven't been able to close the gate properly because there's a wasp nest in there. This one. What's that one. That one, yeah. Because I've been stung. <laughs> they just swarmed me and stung me. So, okay. Cheers. Thanks. Upper lunch hut. Welcome to take shelter. Oh, it's a bothy of conspiracy theorists. I finally got to the top of that. Oh man. <laughs> Garmin said it was the top of the climb. Standing stones over there. Somebody's been putting on a play. The Battle of Glenshee. Death to the Catarans was the cry from the Glenshee farmers in 1606. But in this year is the last and bloodiest of all the Cataran wounds. This is hard. My legs are shot from earlier. So I'm just winding up as best I can.
I've only done 58 miles and you know that was a one of the hardest 58 mile rides I've ever done absolutely brutal and um, probably partly due to my lack of technical skills but I had to do an awful lot of hike bike huge amount of hike bike uh, found a campsite which seems a reasonable place to camp apart from there's a road across the, the way um, not quite as glamorous as last night but I've eaten getting some liquids in getting ready for another good day tomorrow so day three of the Cairngorms loop full day two just heading from my campsite into uh, Braemar where I need to pick up some food I thought I had plenty <laughs> but uh, bars in particular I got through very quickly it's been a tough tough ride yesterday I'm hoping it's slightly easier today my legs are feeling it. You're a handsome fella, aren't you? Looks very dramatic, I don't know why. Find a bungee cord to fasten it, but nobody seems to sell one. So, yeah. The bike shop gave me an old energy. Oh, it's not pretty, but it's doing the job. Hey. I 
man in St. Paris is one of my crack of dinners. That's it, go, go, go. That's it, let's go. Go on. Go on. Go on, go. Go. Cars are just curious most of the time, but there's an awful lot of beef there to come thundering down top of me if I wanted to, so I wasn't keen. Right. I've got lost, I shouldn't have gone past the bloody cars in the first place. I'm just find, trying to find my way back down onto the track through these trees. Uh, but I've come to the most spooky house in the world. I guess I decided to do a final climb on the day, but whatever it is.
so full. Realized last night if you're while camping, it's really good to pick a, an old ruined building because the ground's quite flat in the middle and you get, you know, the low walls give a bit of uh, shelter both for the tent and for cooking and there tend to be quite a few flat stones around that make things easier too. So that's my, my top wild camping tip. Third morning, fourth day's riding, although it should be a short one today. And, but I do look as if I've slept in a hedge. Looking forward to getting a shower and properly clean tonight. Uh, here's my place I stayed last night. It must have been a reasonable sized farmhouse once upon a time. Uh, before it was le left to crumble. Um, bit of a strange one last night. An uh, official estates vehicle turned up down at the gate. I thought, oh no. Um, and they took quite a while to get through the fence. I assume they were checking. There's a couple of uh, traps down there. So I assume it's the gamekeepers out in their evening round. But they just trundled up the, the lane here behind me past... I gave them a nice little wave and they gave me a wave back and went on. So, thank goodness for Scottish access laws, that's all I can say. But uh, yeah, it's a nice run into Aviemore this morning. in Aviemore. What an amazing few days it's been. That was a brilliant route. I have to say the second day really did test my uh, technical abilities past breaking point. You know, that was, a, was definitely type 2 fun. But the other days were absolutely amazing. It's a fantastic route. And I'm absolutely shattered. You know, it was just a a simple 20 mile run today but my legs every time the, the path kicked up I was dropping down into the bottom gear. So I've had a lovely pizza for lunch and I'm kind of kicking my heels now until uh, the youth hostel opens where I'm staying tonight. Proper bed, proper shower, I'm looking forward to it. Bye. 